Oh my god, why is this so long? If you suck at sculpting, make sure to get proper reference photos. So important. Welcome back guys, ZW here and I struggled so hard to sculpt Moon Knight. You know how it is when there's a new show, everybody is going to make something related to it. So to get a head start, I decided to sculpt before the show comes out. The challenge is of course to capture the likeness of the actor Oscar Isaac. Cause anyone can make something that resembles Moon Knight. Just something white with a hooded cape, right? Naturally, I went for some red carpet photos of him to get his overall features in place. Then, I realized that he's always smiling in those photos, which made sense cause he's at an event in front of hundreds of cameras, so his eyes are always squinting and I don't think that suits the look of an Egyptian superhero. So I moved on to his movies, and I found one called Card Counter. Not entirely sure what the movie was about cause I was busy taking screenshots. I guess it's about counting cards but for some reason he always had a somber expression in that film which I tried to scout initially but switched over to his droopy eyelids kinda look and he just looks like a newly born alien. Ultimately I decided to go with the frowning expression cause Moon Knight can be angry, right? Something I find useful to kind of help me identify the shapes better is to add the hairstyle in as soon as possible. And that's where it got a little messy. Cause I don't know which hairstyle to sculpt. We have spiky hair over here and a slick comeback hair in this movie. But in the trailer, it just looks really curly and messy. Steven. But I don't have enough footage, so I went for the spiky hairstyle since it should technically help either way. Nope. Oh whatever, I really needed a break and it just so happens that a package has arrived and inside of it, well it's just some clothes. Since I can't replicate the amazing looking multifaceted costume, the least I should do is to get a white suit to sell the look. Here we have a toy center white suit. Unfortunately, it came with a pink shirt and a red tie. I did buy a tie separately to paint it white, but for the shirt, we will have to visit our private stash. Yup, here's an exclusive view behind the scenes of ZW's messy room. This is where I film and here is all the extra stuff I have from past to future projects. Hmm, let's see, which project involved suits? Ah, Loki and the Japanese YouTubers. Got it. And we are back with our white shirt. Now, who says hoarding stuff is just a waste of space? So I found another movie called The Promise where he has curly hair that is quite similar to the trailer. Of course I know he was in Star Wars, but his screen time is just so short, it's not much help. Well this hair is pretty neat, he probably gelled it up to impress the girl, so when I tried to replicate that waviness, I failed again. And just when I was about to give up, it dawned on me that it's 30th March, Moon Knight Day. Immediately I hopped onto Disney Plus and had an amazing time watching the first episode Feeling extra inspired to recreate his face digitally, I did it again from scratch, thanks to the new reference photos from the episode itself. With the help of those references, I could tell clearly that his hair is made up of two distinct halves, and in front, a curly fringe that I can duplicate throughout his hair to create his messy hairstyle. Pretty good, huh? That's why it's important to have actual photos to refer to, otherwise it's just a waste of time. After detailing the front, I duplicated it all over his head and did a little sculpting at the back to blend the hairs together. Finishing touches are getting easier. After going in close to add his eyebrows, I simply applied some skin pores to his face and it's almost ready. 
Well, if you watch the series, you would know about Steven and Mark. Why did you call me Mark? I would love to create two hates, one for each personality. The angry, shocked looking one would be Steven with his really messy hair. For Mark, clearly he combs his hair, so I started to move his hair strategically to achieve the look that I want. But if that's all I do for Mark, that would be lame. What else can I do for him? Time for some bandages, or whatever that is, to create his mid-transformation face. There is really no right or wrong, just following what I see. Also, I'm really loving the fringe falling in front of him, so I'm going to mess with his hair a little more until I'm satisfied. And remember the droopy eyes that I failed to achieve? Well, I gave that to Mark to differentiate the two head sculpts. Finally, we can get ready for printing. As per usual, we behead Stevie to isolate the head, stick a cylinder into his brains to dig out a big enough hole to attach it to the body afterwards. Same goes for Mark. Time to print. And just when I thought that everything was going smoothly, I got hit with the most unexpected thing. I bought the wrong suit. Obviously, I did not read properly when I was purchasing it. This is made for basketball players, and they are huge and crazy tall, so the pants are baggy and so long. The jacket sleeves are also covering the hands too. For the baggy pants, I'm going to use, don't freak out, a black belt to tie it. Relax, we can use the jacket to cover it up. Everything is still white, okay? For the pants and the sleeves, yeah, we gotta do something about it. What I'm thinking is, I could fold them up to the length that I want and cut it. Yup, no money to buy another suit, we need to make do with this. After pressing the life out of the pants in frustration to leave a mark, I started cutting. And cutting. And clearly, our resolve is not enough, we need heavy machinery to aid us. Holy hell, that was easy. So I just decided to use some glue to keep it in place and I was panicking because it was sticky and it was hard to fold them downwards. I just totally lost track of the camera's focus but they are done. Same goes for the jacket. Fold, cut, glue, done. And now we can paint the accessories white. Oh yeah, the prints are ready from my awesome Foam 3 printer and they are looking great. Look at the details printed at its finest. But we gotta get the sandpaper out to do some post-processing. A little snip snap, a little sand sand, and it's time for some skin. The paints are actually quite thin, so you can speed up the process a lot with a heat gun. Especially useful if you are rushing to make an upload. Well, you know the steps, some red to make him look alive, brown to give him some color, smoke to give him some- hold on some shadows, uh, black for hair, and oh really? For the eyes of the mid-transformation mark, his eyes are supposed to glow, so I'm gonna use chrome paint to replicate it, because I have no idea how to attach an LED to the head. Nothing to look here, just applying some stubbers to Steven, use strands of hair to mark, paint up his bandages, and it's time for gloss. Except, it's not. I'm going to try a new way to gloss the eyes, and that is with UV resin. Finally trying something new. Every time I gloss the eyes, they are uneven and not shiny enough, but by dabbing the eyeballs with this clear resin and shining it with a UV torch for a few seconds, oh wow, look at that shine. One more and perfect. I know what you're thinking. Why does Stevie look so fierce? Well, he's supposed to be shocked. And he would have looked shocked if his mouth were opened. I sculpted it open, but for some reason, the printer closed the gaps. I don't know, maybe it needed to be bigger? I do like the transforming mark though. The, the chrome eyes, the bandages, the hair. What do you think? Maybe I should just call them both marks. Anyway, stay tuned and watch some Toy Story videos, yeah? Goodbye.